Lexus is dropping some really cool designs these days and yesterday we talked about the 2024 Lexus GX in today's video we're going to talk about the Lexus TX not as exciting I would say as a design it's still a cool looking it looks a little bit like a minivan to me but it is an SUV so we're gonna have a look at some of these spec and tech from this uh article from auto week before we jump in and talk about this design there are a couple of things in the front end that i want to experiment with just one angle actually and see what it will look like it would just change the angle of that thing but first of all let's have a look at this uh, auto week article linked down in the description so the 2024 lexus tx is a three row crossover similarly sized to the toyota grand highlander and this is a huge vehicle it comes with a base 2.4 liter turbocharged inline four that sends 275 5 horsepower 317 pound feet of torque to the front or you could option it with all wheel drive and it comes with an eight speed automatic transmission if you want to if you don't want to have the base you can step it up to the tx 500 h hybrid variant which blends the same two uh, turbocharged 2.4 liter with a six speed automatic and a hybrid system pretty interesting that they dropped the eight speed for the higher trim level and brought it down to a six speed but they added the hybrid powertrain there and Lexus says that the tx 500 h makes 366 horsepower and 409 pound feet of torque which i think sounds a lot better in this size of a vehicle to have a little bit more power than the base model and if you want to step it up even further than that you can have the 550 h plus with a 3.5 liter v6 with a hybrid system and a cvt to make a total out to 406 six horsepower so you have three different trim levels and you have three different gearboxes very interesting solution uh, by lexus i'm sure they have a good uh, reason for having it like that but having a cvt in the top version it feels a little strange to me and this top version also gives you 300 <laughs> 33 miles not 300 miles 33 miles of electric range would be sweet to have a v6 with 406 horsepower and 300 miles of electric range maybe in a couple of years the tx 500h and the 500h plus come with a lexus all-wheel drive system uh a standard so it's only in the base where you can get it with uh, only front wheel drive on the inside you have the standard 12.3 inch digital uh, gauge cluster and a 14 inch touchscreen same thing as we had in the Lexus GX so uh, I think that's it uh, it's gonna go on sale later this year and the pricing is not revealed yet but the Grand Highlander which is the Toyota uh, cost $44,400 so this being the Lexus version of that definitely gonna cost a little bit more than $44,000 so let's jump in here to Photoshop and let's have a look at this new design language from Lexus and I feel like Lexus and um, uh, Toyota are now morphing even closer together this looks m very much like a Toyota to me and the reason being is we don't have the same type of Lexus grill this spindle grill as they call it uh, as pronounced in this version we do have some nice chamfers here and we still have the lexus l shape but here it's upside down so you see that it sticks down right here it goes downwards here instead of upwards and it's also been switched to having it go upward right here in the in the in this end of the led to going downwards in the outer section of the led so that's a pretty big deal when it comes to uh, uh, design identity for a brand to change the headlight and the daytime run lights like this totally invert everything that goes on in the, in the graphic features in the headlights and then you have this new spindle grill that uh, lexus says they wanted to minimize this uh, styling that we have here to reduce drag which is very interesting uh to see how this is exactly is supposed to reduce the drag then having it be a little bit more complex just the texture of the grill but i mean if that's what lexus is saying that's most likely what is going on here i do like this grill though we still have the same angle of the grill that we're used to seeing from lexus but i like the the new lexus rx grill i'm a huge fan of that grill and i know a lot of people don't like what's going on in the rx grill with the chamfer up top and then you have this uh grill pattern that kind of fades from the top and the bottom into the center of the grill i think that's a very beautiful looking grill from lexus and i know um probably in the minority when it comes to uh liking that grill or not however there are a couple of things here in the front end so i'll have a look at this design it looks as i said very much toyota ish and it doesn't really have a lot of lexus styling in the front identity in the front end but there's one thing here that i would like to change and that is this angle of this plastic piece let's see if we do have some 
actual intakes here. I'm not sure if this down here is functional or not. It might be. Here it looks like there is a hole here, so we do have some function in this area. But I'm not a huge fan of this upward angle pointing upwards and inwards in the side here. So what I would like to do is just change this uh, angle of this graphic features real quick to just lower this and maybe have it something like maybe horizontal. I think horizontal will just would actually suit this design to have it be like this. Let me show you uh, a little bit cleaner what I'm uh, talking about here. So lowering the uh, angle of that thing to have it be horizontal like this instead of having it upwards like that. I just think that suits this design more and this is not the you know best redesign I've ever made in, in on YouTube, but you get the point. I'm not gonna spend more time redesigning that thing. I just wanna show you the idea behind what I'm talking about. So let's go into the side view here. And this is where it becomes a little bit mini vanny to me because look at the volumes in the hood here. Look at what's going on over the front axle. It's a very huge volume, pretty much box that sits on top of the front axle. It, it doesn't look bad, but it just doesn't look very um, athletic or SUV-like in my opinion. This is where the minivan style comes in and we also have a very straight roof line up here and a pretty horizontal rear end not a lot of ground clearance in the 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 front or the back here and we also don't have any plastic cladding going around the, the wheel arches so it doesn't feel like it's you know an suv sport utility vehicle it's not it doesn't look like it's very sporty to me this design neither when it comes to uh, cornering or off-road performance it just looks very static this design to me but again this is their biggest SUV so I get it they're supposed to be a lot more stately as I've talked about myself and uh, said a lot of times here on the channel before so I get what they have why they have this design but I do think they could have worked a little bit with for example removing this piece and have a little more ground clearance in the rear at least to make it look more sporty or more off-road capable than what this looks like it definitely not as exciting of a design like we have in the GX which I totally love I can't wait to see that over trail plus trim out on the streets and drive it myself eventually looking at the rear end i think this is definitely by far the best view for this um, new tx i think it's gorgeous in the rear we have some very stately graphics here nothing crazy going on with a led bar typical lexus styling with the lexus uh, letters stamped out in the middle Again, I'm going to say the same thing as I did in the GX video. This wiper here, why not just cover it up here and have it be more Lexus style. Clean it up in the rear view. You can have this on a Toyota. You can have the wiper visible on a Toyota. But I think when we, when we go up to Lexus, we need to have a little bit more sophistication in the rear end. And this is pretty much the only detail in the rear that ruins this said sophistication. For me, at least. I like how it looks like it's pretty planted here with these fenders sticking out from a straight uh, rear view. It looks nice and tight in the rear, and it doesn't look like a minivan in this case. And this being the top of the line TX500H, it's surprising to see that they are moving away from adding, you know, exhaust pipes, visible exhaust pipes on both the GX and the TX here. So instead, they're hiding somewhere underneath here and just, I guess, pointing downwards. But they decided to still keep a, uh, a diffuser intact in the rear, which I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure this is not has any sort of uh, functionality to it to suck the rear end to the ground, but it still looks sportier than just having a blank bumper in the rear, which would be more of an elegant luxury feel. Overall, as I said, this is definitely by far my favorite view of the new TX, and I also like this black graphic here, cutting into some of the volumes and cutting that out, carving it out from the rear end volumes. Now, looking at the interior here, uh, it feels very similar to what we saw in the GX, specifically with the housing here for the gauge cluster looking really nice and we have a fully digital 12.3 inch uh, gauge cluster which looks like it's 100% uh, configurable at least I hope so because another thing that I say all the time is if you're going to have a gauge cluster that's completely made up of pixels nothing physical in it what's the point if you can't configure it and show exactly what it is you want it to show but this feels a lot more fluent and organic than we have in the gx which was super military style both in the exterior and the interior 
this is a little bit more uh, family friendly, I would say, with some curvatures here. And you see we have a connection here that we didn't have in the GX from going from the dash and into the door. It has a nice flow to it. In the GX, you just had a vent that sticks up like this, which I like on the GX, but it looks pretty clean here as well. And I get it, it's two completely different philosophies when it comes to the styling of the car. And you can see that we have this Toyota style of the integration of the infotainment screen here, the 14.3 inch, I think this was. You have some angles in the corners that we didn't have in the GX. Start button is still located in the same position up top in the top left corner of the infotainment screen, a very interesting position to have the start button on. And I also like that we have these look like they are physical dials and knobs and stuff for the climate control. I don't see any physical buttons for the temp control though. So I think the temperature, uh, the I mean the fan speed, I think the fan speed is right here. Uh, I believe and that is looks like it is part of the software itself in addition to the heated and cooled seats as you can see with these uh, small icons here and we do have the volume knob in the middle all black we also have some physical vents here but it looks like the how you angle the vents are sitting down here so I'm not sure if these are actually the vents or something else or if the vents are located right here with this um, adjustable pieces very interesting to see what that's going to look like in real life. Down here you have the wireless charging, you have a couple of USB ports. I think the article said that they have seven USB slots, so you can charge all the devices that you have. Your iPad, your MacBook, your, your phone, your wireless earbuds, whatever you have, you're going you're gonna to have room to charge that in the interior of this thing. Look at these square uh, cup holders here. Very interesting design. I like that when uh, when they're starting to experiment a little bit, have some fun with the cup holders and details like this in the, the cars. It just feels a little bit more innovative to have some fun with that. And I guess the designers also had a lot of fun uh, creating something new instead of just having it be a round ellipse like this. Let's make it proper like that. And then down here as well. Not sure what these buttons are. This looks like traction control on and off. Not sure why you want that off in this type of vehicle. And then you have the parking button here. And this, I can't make out what this icon is because it's essentially just five white pixels. It's very hard to see what it is. I do like this steering wheel design. It feels very fat and sport. The steering wheel design looks sporty, if nothing else, on this car. You have the three spoke and you have the F Sport down here. Looks like these are the controls for probably adjusting the gauge cluster and customizing that. And here you have the controls for the radio settings. You can see the volume icon right there and you also have the pages button right here probably something to do with the gauge cluster as well so overall let's just pop in the gorgeous uh, gx next to the uh, tx here so overall i think lexus is just doing a fantastic job when it comes to their designs both of these look very interesting and as you know i'm a huge fan of this new specifically the gx design i just think it looks so good and if i was in the market for a big luxury off-roader this is probably going to be at the top of my list just by the design of this thing the tx more family friendly as i said still looks good still has very clear uh, brand identity except for in the front end where i'm not sure why they decided to put the LEDs upside down and flip them but I guess that's part of the uh, whole evolution of how a brand changes over time and morphs into something new let me know what you think about the TX thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video